The San Francisco Bay Delta is literally dying as a result of drastically reduced freshwater inflows. The Bay Delta Water Quality Control Plan offers a once-in-a-generation opportunity to revive the estuary and rivers that feed it. The Bay Delta is the largest estuary on the west coast of the Americas, and about half of the precipitation that falls on California flows into it. The Sacramento River drains the northern part of the Central Valley, and the San Joaquin River drains the southern portion. The Delta provides habitat for more than 500 species of fish and wildlife, and serves as a migration path for salmon and steelhead traveling to and from their home streams to the Pacific Ocean. It's fitting that San Francisco, or St. Francis, was the patron saint of animals. The Bay Delta is a major stopover along the Pacific Flyway, providing food and habitat for migratory birds. Historically, more than a million salmon spawned in Central Valley rivers every year. We still have four seasonal runs of Chinook salmon. Salmon are a keystone species, providing food for more than 100 other animal species. They transport nutrients from the ocean to upland habitats, fertilizing forests and meadows. Aquatic insects feed on dead salmon carcasses and in turn provide food for the next generation of salmon. Salmon lay about 5,000 eggs, and on average, only about two survive to become reproducing adults. The remaining eggs and fish fuel the food web, so we're really talking about a salmon-based ecosystem. Humans have depended on California salmon for a main source of protein for thousands of years. Historically, Native Americans in the Central Valley harvested 8.5 million pounds of salmon annually. Following the gold rush, salmon provided a vital source of protein for early Western settlers as California was being developed. Commercial salmon fishing continues to generate hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue every year in California while providing us with healthy, delicious food. With the introduction of agriculture in the 1800s, levees began to constrain the flow of waterways and fresh water was diverted from rivers to grow crops. Up to 6.6 .6 million acre feet or 2 trillion gallons of water per year is pumped from the southern delta south for agriculture and urban uses. Water diversions from the delta supply a portion of the drinking water for two-thirds of Californians and irrigation water for millions of acres of farmland. In an average year, only a third of the San Joaquin River's natural flow reaches the delta. In some years, 90% of the San Joaquin's natural flow is diverted. The 2015 water year was extremely dry. The blue line represents what would have naturally flowed down the river, and the red line represents actual flow after diversions. The small red blip was the spring pulse flow required to help juvenile salmon migrate out to the Bay Delta. On average, less than 50% of the freshwater flow from the Central Valley reaches the Bay, and in some years, less than 35%. Reducing inflows shifts the size and location of the ecologically important salinity mixing zone, affecting everything from plankton at the base of the food chain to marine mammals at the top. Between 1975 and 2014, the natural unimpaired runoff in the watershed was only low enough to create a supercritically dry year once, but upstream diversions captured so much runoff during those four decades that the Bay experienced supercritically dry conditions in 19 years instead of just one. Reduced freshwater inflow has changed the chemistry of the delta, enabling cyanobacteria to thrive. These blue-green algae produce neurotoxins that can make people sick and kill plankton and wildlife. Some water purveyors argue that conditions other than flow, including predation from non-native species such as bass, are driving the collapse of native fisheries. However, the science tells us flows are the most critical factor. Low river flows impede fish passage, raise water temperatures, decrease dissolved oxygen, concentrate pollutants, and eliminate floodplains that serve as important habitats. Low flows have altered the San Joaquin River and its tributaries, making the water warmer and slower moving, creating ideal conditions for non-native plants and animals, such as water hyacinth and bass, that have evolved under such conditions. Native plants and animals evolved with faster moving colder water and are now at a disadvantage. Diminished flows from the Delta's tributaries exacerbate the concentration of pesticides, fertilizers, toxic chemicals, sewage, and salt, and warmer water is one of the biggest threats to native fish. Mature salmon need high enough flows to reach their spawning grounds, and juvenile salmon depend on high flows during the snowmelt period to flush them out to the ocean. There's a direct correlation between flows and salmon populations. When flows are higher in the spring, more juveniles survive and return two and a half years later to spawn. The commercial salmon fishery is on the brink. 
While there used to be 10,000 commercial fishing permits, now there are less than 2,000. The salmon population was so low in 2008 and 2009 that the commercial salmon fishing season had to be canceled, resulting in the loss of more than 2,000 jobs and a quarter billion dollars in annual revenue. The Bay Delta Water Quality Control Plan was required by the Clean Water Act. The plan was first implemented in 1978 and was updated in 1995. The plan is supposed to be updated every three years, but no significant changes have been made in over 20 years. The California Water Fix, which includes the Twin Tunnels, used to be called the Bay Delta Conservation Plan, causing some confusion. The Bay Delta Water Quality Control Plan is different and focuses on flows rather than infrastructure. The Delta Stewardship Council directed the State Water Board to adopt and implement updated flow objectives for the Delta to achieve the co-equal goals of ecosystem protection and ensuring a reliable water supply. Phase one of the Bay Delta Plan focuses on the San Joaquin River Basin and Southern Delta, and phase two will focus on the Sacramento River Basin and Delta outflows. Phase one was initiated in 2009 to update flow objectives for the San Joaquin River and its major tributaries to protect fish and wildlife and to update salinity objectives to improve agriculture in the Southern Delta. A draft substitute environmental document in lieu of an environmental impact report was released on September 15, 2016. The plan will establish flow objectives for the Lower San Joaquin River's three major tributaries, the Stanislaw, the Tuolumne, and the Merced. Currently, 40% of the natural flow from the Stanislaw makes it to the San Joaquin, 21% from the Tuolumne, and 26% from the Merced. The State Water Board's own flow criteria report determined that approximately 60% of unimpaired flow between February and June would be fully protective of fish and wildlife in the Lower San Joaquin River and its tributaries. February through June are critical months for juvenile salmon rearing and outmigration. The plan recommends requiring 40% of unimpaired flow. While an improvement, 40% will likely not be enough to achieve the goals of the plan. The plan allows for increasing or decreasing flows depending on whether biological goals and objectives are met. Non-flow measures, such as controlling non-native predatory fish, augmenting spawning gravel, and restoring habitat could reduce flow requirements if successful. The key to achieving the co-equal goals of protecting fish and wildlife and ensuring a reliable water supply is water use efficiency. A good example of what can be achieved is right here in the Bay Area, where 2.6 million people get water from the Tuolumne River through the Hetch Hetchy water system. Between 2006 and 2016, overall water use decreased by 30% despite population and jobs growth. Conservation worked. Developed water is water diverted and used by people. 80% goes to agriculture, and 20% is used in urban areas. Through water-efficient irrigation practices and replacing lower-value water-intensive crops with higher-value water-efficient crops, we could grow more food with less water. In the South San Joaquin Water District, a pressurized irrigation system reduced water use by 30% while increasing crop yields by 30%. In California, water is a public trust resource, meaning it belongs to all of us. Water purveyors have water rights, but the state can determine which beneficial uses have priority. It could be argued that food grown for Californians is a beneficial use of our water, but it's harder to make that case for exports. Agricultural exports benefit a few farmers, often corporations, at the expense of other beneficial uses. The five-member State Water Resources Control Board will determine the outcome of the Bay Delta Water Quality Control Plan. It's our job to encourage them to make their decision based upon the best available science. Please consider attending and testifying at one of the public hearing dates and submitting written comments. Details can be found on the Tuolumne River Trust website at www.tuolumne.org. Thanks for taking the time to view this presentation. Please visit our website and get involved. We also would appreciate you forwarding this link to your family and friends.